Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we are going to cover a new tool called Data Build Tool or DBT. This tool is dubbed as part of the modern data stack. DBT is an open source Python framework and a CLI tool. It allows engineers to transform data in a database by simply writing SQL select statements. DBT turns these select statements into tables and views. DBT does the T or the transform and the ETL or rather ELT, extract, load and transform. It transforms the data we have already loaded into our data warehouse. It doesn't do extract or load. However, it is extremely good at transforming the data. We have already covered an extract and load tool in the shape of Airbyte. Using Airbyte, we have extracted data from SQL Server and loaded it into Postgres. We will use dbt to transform and shape this data. dbt is agnostic about the database it is connecting to. Therefore, we can quickly switch the connection and migrate to a new database management system without much fuss. dbt brings the best software development practices like code modularity, portability, CI-CD, and documentation to data warehouse development. In this video, we will set up the dbt core or the CLI on our machine. dbt also offers a paid cloud offering, but we will stick to the open source. We can use pip to install dbt core on our Windows or Linux operating systems. Since we are going to work with Postgres database, we will install the dbt Postgres adapter. But there are various dbt adapters available for other databases such as Redshift, Snowflake, BigQuery to name a few. Let's open up command prompt or a terminal and issue the pip install command. This will install the dbt core and the Postgres adapter on our system. This library is already installed on my PC and we can confirm the install by issuing dbt dash dash version command. This will print out the dbt version and the adapters. It displays the dbt core and the version installed along with the latest available version. In addition, we see the database plugin we have installed for Postgres. Now that we have the library installed, let's create our first dbt project. We can create the project with dbt init command and after init, we provide the project name. Let's call the project warehouse. This creates the sample dbt project and dbt configuration folder under users folder. It is asking us to confirm which database we would like to use. If we have multiple database adopters, then they would be listed here. We are going to go ahead and enter one for Postgres. Our project is successfully created. And this is the project structure. The SQL files are under the models directory. By default, dbt creates few sample tables to get us started. Before continuing, let's configure the database connection. dbt creates a profile.yaml file in the users folder. We see a new .dbt folder that houses this file. dbt uses this file to connect to the database. We are going to open this file in a text editor and fill out our database detail. We will provide it the host, which is localhost, and default port for Postgres is 5432. We will provide it our Postgres user and password. And our database is AdventureWorks, since we have been working with this, and our source tables are in the public schema. And Let's go ahead and set the threads to four. We only have one database for now, so I'll leave the prod section alone. Our target connection is set to dev, so by default, dbt will connect to dev. Let's save our changes and head back to command prompt. Using the profile.yaml file, we can test our database connection from the command line. So we'll issue dbt debug command. Okay, this throws an error. It is not able to locate the dbt project.yaml file. 
This error suggests that we are in the wrong directory. And this file does not exist at the current location that is open in command prompt. So we need to change directory and let's rerun the command. This time around, both files are loaded and we are successfully connected to our database. All checks are green. Before moving on, let's take a look at our current database state. In the previous session, we have loaded the data into Postgres database using Airbyte. We see Airbyte tables as well as our source tables we imported from SQL Server. We will use these tables for our DBT project. Back in our DBT project, let's review the example models. By default, DBT gives us two sample models to work with. Let's open these and examine the content. The model starts with a Jinja configuration that states that this model will be saved as a table. We will see later in our project.yaml file that all models are materialized as views. So this setting is overriding that file. And this is followed by a CTE or common table expression. And if you're new to SQL, check out my series on SQL. Here we are selecting one as ID and we are unioning another select statement with this. Then we simply select from this CTE. This is pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second example. In this model, we are selecting from the first model with the help of ref or reference function. This is a built-in function in dbt and this model is filtering the data where ID is one. Let's go back to the terminal and build these models and see if they are persisted to our Postgres database. We will issue a dbg run command. It has found two models in our project. It created the first model as a table in the database. And the second model is persisted as a view in the database. We can switch to PG admin and view these objects. Let's refresh the table node and we see our first dbg model persisted as a table. We can expand it and see the columns. Let's query this table and view the data. It has two rows and one of them is blank. We can find the second model under views. Back in our dbt model, let's review the structure of a dbt project. dbt logs are saved under logs directory and we can open the log file and view the dbt logs. Once we install dbt packages, they will be available under the dbt packages folder. The macro directory holds the functions that automate the repetitive task or help us extend the dbt functionality. We will see an example of this later on. The models folder houses our SQL script. The script gets built as tables or views in the database. We can save our reference data in the seeds directory. We can save flat files here and dbt can ingest these flat files and persist them as tables in our database. And we will cover an example of this later on as well. And we can save snapshots, that is the state of a table at a certain time. And once we take those snapshots of tables, these are saved in the snapshot folder. The target folder contains the manifest. This single file contains a full representation of our dbt project's resources such as models, tests, macros, etc. dbt uses this file to populate the documentation site and to perform state comparison. Here we also see the compiled SQL for our dbt models. We can open and review the compiled SQL. This is helpful when we have a lot of Jinja template in our SQL files and we want to figure out what the actual script looks like for a model. The actual SQL that gets executed against the database is saved here. All the tests and their results are saved in the test folder. So this is the structure of a dbt project. Finally, let's open and review the dbt project.yaml file. It starts with our project name and what version of dbt we are using. This is followed by profile name. This profile name should be same as in our profile.yaml file. 
then it has references to all of our folders we have just reviewed. This is followed by the target path, and this is the directory where the compiled SQL files are stored. Last, we have the reference to our models folder for the warehouse project. We're building the models located under the example folder, and by default, they are materialized as views. If you recall, we overwrite this setting in the first model. And our first model is materialized as a table in the database. So this is the anatomy of a DBT project. In this session, we have successfully installed and built a DBT project. In the following session, we will remove the example models and plug in our own models and work with them. This is all for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.